Hello and welcome to a Crimson Feud. Uh, this is Intergalactic Coliseum, I think day five. For a whole bunch of games played so far, it's clear it's the champion's going to be either BC or Old School. The player from Old School here is uh, Mr. Smith. He's facing a player from S FSL, SFO. Can't remember now. But uh, third place should be Voice of Reason. Um, Unless, of course, uh, something crazy happens, which is always possible. I have to play my game tomorrow. Maybe that will get uploaded. I can still screw things up. Um, but in this one, it's basically uh, whether or not uh, Mr. Smith will lose. Because every single game you lose for your faction, it does uh, have an effect on your overall points. So I'm just going to play a few games, random games from this round between different factions. Let's see, Mr. Smith, Siren, Mephi, EF on this map. Got to be pretty quick. This uh, reclaim, there's some tech 2 reclaims. Very spread out mask tractors. So if you just sit back, you're going to be in trouble. You got to grab all that mask, which also means raiding. Should be fairly effective. Second air from Mephi. Who's also got to take a phone call. You got to hate that. Because uh, you're focusing on something, then suddenly you gotta talk to somebody. Also, reclaim here, don't wanna neglect that. Yeah, that's exactly where the raid should have came in, and that's where the McMarine gets its first kill. See, there's a tank for defense here from F. You can see Mr. Smith was playing as if there weren't gonna be any raids. Actually, doing quite well so far. This McMarine with two kills avoids a Mantis. He's going to look for more kills first. Three land from Smith. See how that affects. That should have a huge effect here shortly. Unless the air can do a lot because with three factories, a lot of engineers, a lot of land. Uh, Miffy though, running away a little bit with power. He's got up on mass. See, <laughs> because you have so much land build capacity, their engineers have been rebuilt. Looks like that McMarine has been killed and so much reclaim all over this map. Really gotta attack it. See no dodging. Oh, I think that was an accidental piece of dodging from Mr. Smith. Any air yet from uh, Smith? No, he's got first four land. Fifth air from Smith. Which means the bombers for Mephi can play for a little while. Mephi also has a chance to suppress air, although already anticipated by Smith. But uh, yeah, oh, this is a great target. A whole bunch of engineers standing by. That's what you get a bomb. And of course, now they're all split up. It's actually four NGs. And this Mantis with a huge amount of kills. I'm seeing dead engineers all over the place. One, two, three, four. And now we're looking for the fifth kill. Actually got six. Oh, that's a shame to lose that for Mr. Smith. Yeah, this game is not on my usual system of casting in random places once again. So hopefully there aren't any crazy technical issues. Oh, look at this tank with one kill. Looks like the other engineers have been suppressed. And uh, after that initial stage, the AC use. I mean, Smiths is moving out with AC to the middle. I gotta notice the middle does not have too many mask structures. There is some reclaim. You really got to be fighting about uh, the expansions on the sides, much more valuable. Lance Spam, Tech 1 Lance Spam continues for Mephi, who's also going Tech 2 on a Mask Extractor. We already see a Tech 2 Mask Extractor. Going for a second uh, for Mr. Smith. And here's a critical micro. Something got to pay attention to. So let's see this uh, from Smith's point of view for a little while. Yeah, look at that scout. He knows exactly what's going on ahead of him. Probably he's just going to get some free reclaim in the middle. Let's actually check out this reclaim 2300 versus 1600. And this raiding group has a lot of potential if it comes in right now before the point defense is finished. Not sure if it will happen. The ACUs retreat to their respective forces, but a much bigger force for Smith. 
Our uh, point defense is not finished. Is this, uh, yeah, I think that should be sufficient number of Manti. Big problem for Mephi. Actually, you can see in terms of mass, Mephi now. Actually, it's going to be even worse once he loses a couple of those mass extractors. No second tech to mass extractor yet. But a lot of reclaim potential. Mephi needs to also push in. Mephi uh, is denying one of the expansions. He's got the other. But we're seeing raiding groups. Actually, it uh, looks like... Oh, did, I think that the Hydra died at the end. But a lot of mass extractors survive. So overall, it's just a big reclamation field for Mephi. And now Smith will deny. Both side expansions have been denied. You see he was in the middle. Smith looks like he's given up the middle not strategically important but he has begun the gun upgrade he's got a significant power advantage which means he can afford things like this and tech to land as well also go on tech to power so smith really taking hard at least uh, harder than uh mephi as uh if mephi can take uh, advantage of that reclaim and also yeah rhinos Hmm. Yeah, one of the reasons I'm casting this because I want to get some tips for uh, tomorrow's games. So far, I really like the way Smith's playing this. Probably should watch how Blackheart plays this, but that's all right. Hmm. Maybe my games from tomorrow will make it into the same video. Who knows? Probably not, though. Yeah, now this tech to force for Smith uh, has the potential to do a lot of damage. We're also seeing tech to land, so we're gonna have a chance to see Pillar versus Rhino. Rhino is about 50% more expensive. However, uh, in terms of health, it's not that far ahead of the Pillar. But you can go three versus two. I think the Pillars win. Looks like Smith is done thanks to that mod. I know. Stealth plus gun, so he's gonna get stealth plus gun around minute 10, which will allow him to run through the middle pretty easily. Mephi's ACU back home defending. This is becoming a significant piece of reclamation. Is that a tech one or a tech two engineer? I can't tell. He's gonna take these high grounds. Oh, looks like he's got the other one. Also, a good looking force, mostly tech one. There's also some scouts in there. And that's something to think about when you see a force like this, when you want to analyze it. Uh, if it doesn't have any arties, you know, you can stop it with a PD. If it has no flag, bomb it. Then another uh, unit, which is a very good target, but a lot of times there's only one scout. That's kind of what you want to bomb with your with your bombers or any other forces. It only takes one shot to kill it. And a force with no radar is much weaker. Yeah, radars in this game, at all stages, they're all very weak, except some tactics owners. But uh, overall, they're very, very important units. That's something if you'll watch uh, gameplay videos from people who are starting versus people who've played. You see scouting is the major difference. So Mephi is actually ahead on mass. He's got uh, 4,500 reclaim. Smith uh, nearly identical, slightly more. But a lot more power for Smith. He's not working on a second tech to pgen so if he's making this much power, he's got to have some sort of plans for it. You don't just do that. Ooh, yeah, not the best thing to do. Got to take it easy on that tech to power. And uh, Medusas together with the Rhinos. Similar numbers, I think this force is slightly stronger. And uh, more engineers being dropped in. Mephi a lot more active on uh, the dropping front, but you can see how the forces for Smith, they're really converting to the tech two stage. This is called modernizing your army in the tech two stage. And I gotta say this uh, ACU has been very disappointing. Big investment hasn't really done much. And uh, these uh, spots for extra mass structures, not something not to discount. That's actually the mass difference between these two players right now. And uh, if Mephi can secure that area, I'd love to see a tech to engineer drop there. And yeah, these uh, these are major forces. Yeah, now you can see the shape overall of Mephi's uh, base. What he's got is gonna cover his expansion, 
with his ACU. He's got plenty of units in support. This will give a lot of time for his engineers if he decides to move in to secure this area. He's also got an advanced force that can go in whenever it wants. It's, it's probably, yeah, looking at it for his radar, you should anticipate that's probably at least as good as his force. So he's just going to sit still. He knows he's got no problems whatsoever. And you know what the most beautiful unit is? It's that Tectorator 250 power. And he can put a whole bunch of those all over the map. He should put stealth everywhere. And uh, he can't say he's got map control. We're seeing that he's actually behind on mass. But when you get a situation like this, uh, you got to feel pretty good. This, whenever somebody puts Tectorator against you like this with nothing on it. That's a tech one bomber. Please kill it. Because that's that's a sign of disrespect. Mephi also catching up on power, actually power stalling. One of the reasons he's power stalling is because he's got these and he needs to turn those off. And he's getting the gun as well. Very late guns. Mephi is seeing assaults on all fronts. And actually when his radar blinked yeah, he went a little too heavy on the shields finally. Yeah, he's finished his gun. Where is he going to go? So he's going to abandon his expansion. So you can see overall, he is reacting to Mr. Smith. He knows there's a gunned ACU here. He didn't use his ACU to defend, and which allowed Smith to have a complete victory on the left side. So strategic, uh, strategically, uh, Mephi just got outplayed right there. His ACU should have had a gun upgrade earlier, and he should have been defending his expansion. Meanwhile, uh, Smith is actually walking home now. And uh, another thing we are seeing is the Rhino overall is a little better. However, uh, a lot of reclaim potential once again. And uh, we might actually see the ACUs meet on the left side. No hope whatsoever for Mephi to take the bottom. And uh, some scouts not coming in from Mr. Smith. You see how he's going to take three land now. So another very interesting thing we just saw in the last minute. A big victory for Smith. And what does he do? He doesn't just continue to push because uh, he didn't really see any other good targets. There's no reason for him to continue pushing. Nothing for him to win. Um, in part because there was that ACU right there. So he's just going to take what is what is his and start upgrading. Yeah, knowing when you can attack is the key to any good strategy game. Uh, a lot of redundant factories. And uh, Tech 3 land going up for Mephi as well. So this is where Mephi would get his tech advantage. UEF versus Cybern. And a trebuchet first. It's pretty interesting. It's also nice to see from Me uh, Mr. Smith. He he didn't decide to take it. Uh, take his mass extractors. He went for a high tech, which means he's gonna be mass stalling unless he reclaims. That's a key engineer here. Had quite a bit of reclaim, and uh, looks like Mr. Smith has abandoned this expansion. He will allow Mephi to take it because he felt like he didn't really have the resources to secure that, so he didn't bother with it except for the engineer who cleaned it up. So you can see what's happening here. <laughs> Mr. Smith will come back for a little bit just to <laughs> make me feel a little more reluctant, but he needs to just rush in and take. And what we're seeing is without that awesome tech to Raider, Mephi I guess his radar coverage is fine, but he's just sort of been bombing his expanding forces and uh, waiting on his Percy's. This is a lot of shields and pillars. This force is actually very strong. And uh, with a Percy or two could actually put up a pretty good fight for this right side. And if that happens and uh, Mephi holds on to the left, uh, top left corner and, def and gets a victory in this area, it's a critical engineer here. Uh, this is going to be a big splash. <laughs> so when you got to move or yeah, have an assassination attempt. No, don't retreat. You got a Percy. You got Percy. There's no tech 2 here. 
except those trebuchets. Next trebuchets get killed. Yeah, this is where probably a brick or two would have been better. And now Mephi, fairly brave. He still just attack one ACU with one kill. He does have the gun. That uh, did uh, force Mr. Smith to retreat all the way back to his base. Smith uh, attacking probably does not know that Mephi has tech 3. Mephi's already got 3 Percy, so there's no way Smith can do anything about Yeah, I think he's seen a couple of Percy's. He should retreat. And now this is wide open if uh, Mephi decides to take it. Of course, you have quite slow at doing anything. Yeah, still fairly even, but a little more tech for Smith. Very even power, you can see. And actually, both players using all their power. And this is a situation where this ACU with the gun against tech 3 probably wants to go back home and might actually get sandwiched. We saw Mephi didn't have too much excess power. It's all being used on these shields. <laughs> oh, Medusas. I think it's a big lost opportunity for Mephi not to send a few units, a Percy and a couple of shields to the bottom corner. I would have forced a big response from Mr. Smith. Instead, yeah, he put all of his forces in the middle and that, that's going to allow Smith to hold on to the bottom right corner and will allow Smith to take the top left. So once again, a bit of a strategic uh, blunder there. Also a very good defensive spot for Smith. It's an upgraded raider. Got stealth here as well. And actually, Mephi. He's got to be careful. Commander under attack. He's getting hit by a lot of bricks. Hmm. Oh, this could be a snipe attempt at cruise missile launcher being built. Mephi, couple overcharges. Yeah, this could be a, a attempt. Oh, I think it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. After 22 minutes, Mr. Smith uh, gets a victory. But I think I picked up some things I want to do tomorrow. Let's check out some other maps. Hello, welcome to game two between Mephi and Mr. Smith. Uh, I think the audio should be fixed now. Hopefully it wasn't too bad in the last one. Um, but what will happen? Mr. Smith, uh, this is the best of three, by the way. Just needs one more victory on this map. He sticks with his uh, Cybern. He will be facing off uh, Mafia Seraphim. Cybern uh, do have the advantage on Navy. If this turns out to be a 100% naval affair, Cybern do have a pretty big advantage. Also the ACU can be a good weapon with torpedoes on a map like this. I wonder if that's an issue. I'm sure it's not a big deal to get that version, but all right. I guess uh, Matthew was hosting. On this map, uh, I used to think going to the middle is a good idea. But after watching Voodoo versus Zlo on this map in a couple of games, I saw that just grabbing one of the sides is the way to go. Strong Navy, grab one of the sides, win air control. That's what you got to do. The middle, probably don't want to just give it up, but probably your Navy will dictate whether or not you can have it. Uh, second air is quite standard. Smith is going to do that. Let's actually check out one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, six uh, pigeons plus a hydro air and then navy from Smith. Mephi is going to be a little later on his air. Actually, it'll be fairly similar. What we're seeing is the ACU for Mephi a lot more aggressive toward the bottom expansion. Floating arty is a big luxury for Mephi. Eventually, could be the game winner. Actually, this in combination with the Yancey is very powerful. Yeah, I don't know if Smith wants to walk all the way to there. Yeah, he's going to change his mind. He's going to get that first factory. Once he gets his frigates out, that'll be critical. Smith anticipating second air. 
goes out with an empty and a scout it will do a very good job against the bomber it looks like this already did spot the empty coming in so the bomber got out just in time but uh, complete air suppression from smith this will at least draw the construction of uh, anti-air but this bomber if it stays inconspicuous can do some damage um, the ACU I think also wasn't spotted I don't think Mr. Smith knows where the ACU from Mephi is and uh, where is that under air it needs to be uh, built oh that transport what Mephi paused that yes <laughs> and probably want to make a second air factory Let's see yeah here comes a bomber as well oh. Smith playing this very well this type of uh, game or early on it's all about uh, tech one bombers it's really all about quickness all about uh, paying attention to multiple uh, places. This bomber drops off a bomb, gets no kills. Good dodge. And looks like that transport will be completed, but Smith has to know that there's a transport, so he just needs to see where it will go. Yeah, the transport is going to go hide. Raider gets shut down by Smith. And look at all these bombers coming in. They will also spot the ACU. And an engineer on his own, this engineer needs to complete that factory, although the factory could be in range of a frigate. We're also seeing a frigate, yep. Attack, you want to do a manual attack move, that way it denies anything that's constructed. It's a very mean thing to do, but it has to be done. And what we're seeing here, Smith uh, using the cyber and frigates, they have very good anti-air. It's actually something I want to look up right now. So this uh, frigate, I just looked up all the stats, is significantly better than all the others. It's got 65 DPS against uh, land or naval units, which is the highest of all the different frigates. The closest I think is Aeon with 56. But you also got to take into account the fire rate. And the anti-air is uh, 16 DPS. Uh, the, next is, uh, the next best one is the Seraphim with 13. And uh, EEF is only 10, so... Significantly better, and of course, AI doesn't even shoot against air. There are slight health differences, but those are the main differences really that highest DPS and uh, best hunter air, best offensive frigate you can have. Smith going to the middle with the ACU, total air domination. And Smith does have a foothold in uh, both expansion um, islands, although this factory, I think it will be completed eventually. Uh, I think there is a good chance for Mephi to take this, but yeah, frigate making a nuisance. But ma the major problem for Mephi is the Navy. Mephi has been teching. Uh, wow, tech to mask tractor. Yes, it's got a forced into it. And uh, where is his transport? Yep. Uh, under the sea. Way out in the water. See it swimming. And this is a very annoying thing. Uh, frigates typically one by one are countered by torpedoes. And, uh, on a map that's this small and you only have one or two places where you can begin rebuilding, it really sucks. And now a quick deck two Navy from Smith. What we're seeing is Eco versus Navy here. And uh, Smith, it's going to be difficult for him to actually pump that out with the Eco that he has. But once he does, I think that's going to be game over. And his frigates are going to continue to suppress a lot here. It's another chance for Mephi, but Mephi will need to produce a lot of units. Maybe going tech to air could be a good idea. Because even if he wins both sides, uh, he could be in quite a bit of trouble. Look at all these transports. Mr. Smith can airlift a lot of units. And that's actually on this map is very nice to do. Once you win one of these islands or in any map that's that's like that, you have a whole bunch of forces which are ready to go. You got to pick those up, send them to the next area. Already drop coming in from Mephi. And uh, these are going to be submarines. The worst submarines in the game. One tech two mass extractor, more power for... Smith and uh, this destroyer is nearly done. So much build capacity going right there. Oh, those RDs were <laughs> placed in a very dangerous spot. The so Mephi continues to dominate uh, the eco front. Uh, he does have multiple Tech 1 uh, naval factories now, which should have plenty of mass. Yeah, he's, he's had quite a bit stored, he's going to use that up now. 
Um, Mr. Smith has taken over the middle, which is a big advantage. If he didn't have these six mask tractors, he'd be way behind. Uh, but let's see what uh, is going to be done with this first destroyer. Looks like it's an assault coming in from Mephi, but with this destroyer, if it comes in, where exactly are you going? I think Mr. Smith could stop that force. Cyber Destroyer is very good at doing things like that. Smith thinking about going in a very quick Tech 2 Navy from Mephi. He, got the, he built that very quick and uh, could be in quite a bit of trouble. With this destroyer, yeah, it's going to go directly into Mephi's base. Check out those scouts from Mr. Smith. You can see what that looks like. And look, on a map like this, the destroyer, either the Cybern or Aeon destroyers just have huge range. And now all the build capacity is going to get shredded. And together with the destroyer, uh, Smith says you can go ahead and come in and make all kinds of problems. Tech 2 land from Mephi. And it does appear that uh, Smith will lose the right side. And actually he's going to lose, lose both sides. And uh, destroyer, I don't think it's going to be completed. Yeah, you can see exactly Smith attacking the unit being built. Never want to neglect that opportunity. Smith will reclaim free mass. However, I think Mephi, with the, given that he's got huge map control, if he very quickly goes tech to air, these are just destroyers. He could kill those fairly easy. There could be a cruiser to deal with, but no cruiser yet from Mr. Smith, this could be an opportunity. You just make a whole bunch of gunships and you kill those destroyers, get back into the Navy, and you're not doing that bad. So this game is very unclear. Smith has even less uh, eco now. So, oh, yeah, he's lost the sides. And now these factories need to be paused. Looks so he's going Tech 2. Or actually with Tech 2 land, yeah, Yancey's. Yancey spam. <laughs> is that going to be the second Tech 2? And to check out all this floating crap. Gotta send it in. Suppress the naval production. You gotta go. Smith could be in trouble. But he still has his beautiful destroyers with pretty much fearless destroyers. He can do whatever. And if Smith actually kills this area, there's a tick to mask structure, a lot of reclaim. He can subsidize his eco with the um, Mephi's dead base. This is also has a lot of power. You can see drops coming in. But this is dangerous game for Smith so far away from home. If that destroyer goes to tech to air or something else, this destroyer six skills continues to suppress. Yancey's will come in. And these these don't no no time for micro. The frigates will tear them up. You got to go as fast as you can in position to kill. Is that going to be a cruiser? Nope. Fourth. That's the fourth destroyer. I look at all those tech to mask tractors. Mephi, huge economy. Mephi, you, you tech too much. You got you, you gotta have tech to air in this position. Look at this power. And now a lot of build capacity for Mephi, I think. S Mephi, he can afford to lose this given the huge advantage that he has. He just needs to get back into the game, but I don't think trying to catch up uh, in a navy against a four destroyer to nothing deficit is the way to go. This is where Tech to Air. I think probably Mephi is thinking that there are cruisers. And he's afraid of cruisers. Something traumatic happened to him at some point in his life, and the cruisers hurt him, so he's not making Tech to Air. But against Cybern in general. Yeah, this destroyer is very nice. More build capacity is necessary. If that naval factory goes. <laughs> Seven kills just born. Still no destroyers. Mr. Smith must have very, I'm going to slow this down. I should have good intel that there is no tech to air. Ah, uh, I've been begging for tech to air and this is where it would have really helped because now it's just a single destroyer. It's just so much DPS right there. It's about uh, 20, 200 something. About five frigates from the main cannon plus another hundred from uh, the torpedo launcher. So if you're close to a destroyer, you get about seven frigate worth, well, seven uh, UEF frigate worth of uh, damage per second against your targets. It's a very dangerous unit. And 
Mephi, you have you, you this game's won for you. He will deny some mask gestures in the middle. Gestures. Oh my goodness. The absence of air is appalling, I have to say. Why? You have tech two P gens. Mephi, I wonder how much he's wasting. He's not actually. What the heck are you making? You have a shield protecting nothing. There's nothing that can be done against you. You're losing engineers like crazy. The uh, gestures. This could be a snipe attack, perhaps, from Smith. Or actually, these gestures will do a very good job against floating already as well. And uh, yeah, four destroyers. That's uh, that's the end of that HQ. Oh, this is a frustrating game to watch. Another attempt to get back into the water. You just can't catch up. When when these destroyers are done with that factory, they'll just roll over and kill anything else that you make. So you're always catching up, even though you're ahead. That does not make sense to do that. Yep, gestures. And here comes the first cruiser. I mean, eventually we had to have seen it. And once you get a couple of cruisers, then even the stick-to-air option I've been hoping to see is not going to work anymore. Oh, no. Artillery. Ooh, yeah, I think Mr. Smith is going to get these in two. Yeah, the question is, what faction do I want to use tomorrow on this map? Because this will be a critical game. There's always a chance to lose first in the best of three. There's no pressure. The second game is the one that's critical. You either can win the whole thing, or you must win it to continue. This is the really, if you're in a best of three, the second map is the one to train. Really like the Cybern. I think I want to go Cybern. On the previous one, uh, I like EEF, I think. Seraphim or EEF, I'm not sure yet. Or even Aeon, although it could be exposed against the airload too much. Smith walking all over this map with his ACU like he owns it. Yes, that's what you can do when you own the map. Here we go. Oh, second air. Finally, torpedo bombers. Oh. I guess sniping uh, Smith's ACU would be a nice move. But no air control. Oh, and uh, actually a couple destroyers. Smith allowing this game to continue. Jesters, though, will come in, do damage. A couple tech to flags here would have been nice. And Mephi has had so much mass. We're going to look at the stats at the end of this game. He was so far ahead. Oh, floating already actually got in quite deep. Killed a couple of units. Looks like it's a drop. Hmm. But Mephi, how many tech to mass structures does he have? Yeah, he's got a number. Eight. Transport is full. And he just loaded up a transport. And he's got multiple destroyers. And torpedo bombers. No. Bad move. Gotta win air. Oh, it's gonna be a major tech two drop. <laughs> These cruisers, if you just position them all over the place, they'll suppress any kind of air. Oh yeah. Matthew dreaming about taking back his island. Oh, it's a good, good flag here. It always takes a lot of time for transport to get over a mountain. A lot of time to shoot. But it's a tech 2. Medusa's down. You gotta move. And yeah, they've been found out. Destroyers. Just overwhelm. Why there are tanks there, I don't know. This game has been a painful uh, reminder of Tech 2 naval domination. What are you getting on your ACU? Tech 2. Nice. Nice. Smith continues to walk his map. And I would have already rage quit. I think I would have quit as soon as I lost the first Navy. Uh, heads up for 
My hat's off. To Mephi for sticking this out. Let's see how a destroyer 87. This could be the original. Let's see if there's a destroyer that can beat that. that. One's fresh off the boat. 10, 11. This one's 15, 54, 24, 45, 45, 35. And these might just die here shortly. Nope. They're too badass to die. Friendly fire. Almost. So it looks like. 95 is the original. You can see that uh, stock destroyer is probably about 6,000 uh, about 6,000 mass. This has got to be a five-star veteran here from Mr. Smith. Yep. See, he's regenerating at 25 per second. He's got 10,000 health <laughs> hitting Mephi's ACU. It's the MVP here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Too many tech to mask detectors, no tech to air. This game was absolutely won by Mephi. And he throws in the towel. Does he have a tech to mask detector? Would have been ironic. Yeah, I think Cyber, and I'm pretty much convinced Cyber. Oh, I was gonna check the stats. Let's see in terms of mass. I mean, look at that. <laughs> that's more than. Oh no, that's an eight. Well, that's a significant advantage. That's a big enough gap to uh, build. Yeah, sixty thousand. In terms of destroyers, that is thirty destroyers, which is a lot. My training for the tourney continues. I found a game between Pachirico and Crazed. And since I'm going to play with EEF, I'm going to watch what Pachirico does. Hopefully he doesn't do anything stupid. This seems like a friendly, so he just might. First land, no pigeons. Hydro. Okay, so... Four pigeons. Oh, sorry, four mask tractors. Hydro. Zero pigeons. What about here? He's got a couple of scouts. No light assault bots whatsoever. This is a fairly large map. It's uh, 10 by 10, so we're just trying to cross. I think you can totally do it. This is how I've been doing Mr. Smith and uh, Mephi. So, okay, uh, all right. I guess I am not going to <laughs> copy this builder. Trying to get five mass extractors without uh, well, just the Hydra is... Thank you, Pachirico. I was going to copy you, but I guess now I can't. But the first two land, uh, I guess the power of this build, it didn't waste a lot of mass at all. Maximum mass build, which probably unnecessary given how much reclaim there is. And we, all that mass is not in storage. Not being used, limited by power and build capacity. The ACU for Pachirico running up ahead. One thing I always liked about Pachirico's gameplay were his scouts and radar. You can see based on the size of the scout, radar, radar here, it's actually not a very big map. Is this? That was too far zoomed out. This is actually a fairly small map. I think uh, not all 10 by 10 maps are the same size. I'm, I'm tripping. I want to stop thinking about that. First three land. No air yet. And thinking about this, that second hydro is fairly critical. There are no hydros elsewhere. In terms of reclaim, I'm seeing quite a bit so far. And uh, yeah, power limited. Note to self, make a lot of power. Looks like Craze is also not good. Uh, doesn't have that much power. Up top, a lot of pressure from Crazed. Let's go back in Pachirico's view. I won't copy the build order, but I'll copy going into the middle. Got quite a bit of mass. And uh, the fact that he hasn't made air, I think, is, I guess, the result of not having a lot of power. How many pigeons does he have? He's got one pigeon, a hydro. He's playing this almost like Theta. 
They see you shooting at each other. Well, Christ. Change and, yep. Sign of a good flare. Shot that scout at the end. You can see just how valuable that is. And in terms of micro, it looks like an attack move, but superior numbers. Up top, a victory for Pacho Rico. Yeah. Actually, I uh, bought Planet Annihilation since I got a Steam account to give away this game. Um, played that a couple games, and that's a big fight against EOI. And it's just a reminder how a lot of people think they're good at games and all that stuff that are strategic. A lot of it is how well you can control EOI. All by UI control. The rusty one pushing ahead. Finally got his first kill. And uh, crazed, I think, in position to take the top corner. Two kills for Pachirico. PD abandoned by crazed. I want to look at everybody's view. I want to see what's happening for sure. This fight's fairly even, but what we're seeing is, I guess now Pachirico has divided up his forces. We see we saw three, three forces from Crazed, only two from Pachirico. Pachirico is, is divided. This is where those divisions become critical. The move order versus attack order. Always attack orders. I don't know if I like those from Pachirico. Seems like in an attack order, those tanks just stand still, get hit by Artie. It's so interesting. Oh, Tech 2 land. Ilshavas from Crazed. Extremely even, a little more power for Crazed. Maybe uh, an upgrade. 9 kills, Pachirico. 7 kills. And uh, total domination by Crazed up on top. He's a couple more engineers. Lots of reclaim opportunities. Crazed. 3,600 reclaimed. Pachirico, 4,000, a little more. And, uh, yep, that's a good transport, dropping off engineers everywhere. This, uh, if Pachirico can hold on to that, it'll be very nice. Grazed ACU in a fairly bad position. But Tech 2 gunships, oh, Tech 2 air, quick Tech 2 air from Crazed. Could be a bit of a gamble, but he needs to make that count. Actually, no, tech to land, tech to air is just superior tech from Christ. And uh, the rusty one, I think he's going to lose that expansion. And now uh, Elsheva on the top side, 12 kills, nearly full health. This looks really bad for Pachirico. But where are the gunships? I don't see them. Is there an air fight that I missed? Oh, they're oh they're killing stuff up on the top corner. And that Elshiva finally gets killed. Pillars on the case. Gunships coming in. They're gonna uh, most likely assault uh, our Rusty's ACU. Nope, they're just cleaning up the top. And an assault from Crazed. I think this could be a mistake if Crazed loses that. A lot of reclaim. So he did put a lot of pressure, but Pachirico only fought when he wanted to. And those very compact units from Crazed. Ilshiva surviving. The last units that actually survive, I think they will make it out of that predicament. Rusty trying to get some flag going. But air now from Rusty. Those gunships have died. Nobody in the top. And uh, Pachirico now... Yeah, inferior mass income, but big opportunities. I really love the Ilshavas. I'm not sure if making the like the gunships was, was that big. It did deny the stop corners, but uh, crazed without air control can make anything more out of that. I think a couple more Ilshavas would have looked a lot better. Um, some power storage for crazed. Thinking about overcharges. Pachirico also has a power storage. 
one support factory so far for Pachirico, a tech to mask extractor as well and a push ooh that's a bad Elsheva that's stuck oh, that sucks 41 mass income 5500 9900 in the bank 10,000 for Pachirico middle a PD creep uh, it's a, I guess a safe spot for Pachirico take one bombers missed what got killed but actually Pachirico with this force it's mostly tech one I think it's all tech one did a pretty good job that single Ilshiva <laughs> didn't get the mission done so much reclaim uh, possible now for Pachirico whoever takes the top crazed as He's held on to the spot, but he hasn't pushed. The rusty one, eight kills. And now with a whole bunch of tech two. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a good, good call there. The rusty one just rushed in with a bunch of tech two. Uh, you see now veteran ACU. A couple pillars got overcharged. The middle. So or the PD could be critical. As Craze continues to push up, look at all these Ilshwa. This is where an overcharger too would really help. So far, Craze is the only one overcharging. Rusty one with 12 kills. A lot of build capacity though, close. This is an interesting terrain here. This is fairly easy to defend. This is probably why I bet you could put a PD there and a Raider. It's really hard to squeeze through that point with all the build capacity kind of. Yeah, this is interesting. Looks like the sides once again taken by Pachirico. Pachirico now ahead on mass. And a bit of a counterattack and suddenly 39 kills. Is the vet gonna come? Wow. I would have never thought. That's what the pillars will do for you. I was loving those Ilshavas and suddenly are we gonna have to see that again? Yeah, let's see that again. All right, let's see it from uh, this point. Uh, a couple of minutes before the end, chariot 15 kills. Just built himself some flak. Looking at the composition of these forces, we got five Elshivas, whole bunch of Artie, 35 tanks. Both players do have access to overcharge, nearly identical uh, power production. Seven pillars, a little flak there as well. I think uh, a slightly better force for Crazed, although very similar. This is where I think uh, Pichirico makes a slight mistake. See, this force just sort of went in, just fed Crazed. He put a couple of really nice overcharges in there. Now, what happens here, right after 14 minutes, the rusty one has got 8 kills. And now, what is the composition here? Crazed. 30 kills. He's on the front, forefront of his force. There is the shield here that just went down. Crazed, 31 kills. Pachirico. He's got seven pillars. Crazed continues to push. Five Elshua. So still in terms of tech two very similar. Crazed at 36 kills nearly at the last uh, veterancy. 11 kills for the rusty one who is in a full retreat. And uh, this is where Crazed decides not to press the issue anymore. Meanwhile a whole bunch of Tech 2 factories for Pachirico produced a bunch of units and the new composition for Pachirico here 11 pillars. Each pillar does about 60 something DPS. So with 11 that's 660 damage per second. Still only 5 Ilshavas. So these Ilshavas have been here since the beginning. Big veterans see this one's actually a new bread there so crazed also not a very good 
um, Raider, and this is, yep, he gets the price. He gets an overcharge, 39 kills. And actually, you can see in terms of vet, he's quite a bit away. And all these pillars on the front line. Rusty pushes in. The Ilshawas coming from the back are a bit late. And, uh, yeah, the ACU for Rusty won't continue to press. It's such a minor <laughs> micro mistake, but Jerico takes it. Well, hopefully people enjoyed this one. Yet another game on Crimson Feud, and once again between Pecherico and Craze. That previous one, Pecherico did not have a good build order. I need good build orders. Hopefully this time he adjusts it properly. This time he is Seraphim. Craze goes to Cybern. Cybern could be interesting in this map with their quickness. See if that works out. Uh, closer look at these terrains. We did see some interesting battles here in the previous game. It's a nice uh, canyon there. Uh, one thing to note... Um, I really think this is a much better defensive structure than this. This you can run over, so it's a, you can just rush in. If you take this, it's fairly easy, I think, to continue to push there. Here you can get a nice stoppage, just given all these weird terrains. So uh, what does that mean in terms of where you want to send your ACU? I think uh, sending the ACU, if you're crazed here, make sure you secure that. There are no problems. And then if you actually are not successful taking that, you know, you'll be able to defend with your units right here. But if you're successful taking it, you go ahead and attack. Uh, however, in the previous one, Pecherico went against that logic and uh, actually cut out Craze the Red at this point. A slight micro mistake. See, what is this build order so far? We got, uh, yeah, it looks like a very a third engineer coming out grab and uh, some lean mostly engineers early on so four engineers a couple Selene's actually you know yeah there's also a Tham yeah as soon as the Tham came out that's when this engineer is gonna go at least some of these rocks are quite nice let's see, actually see 175 These two engineers, after the hydro, three land factories, then a couple of pigeons, then a couple more land factories. Great target for some bombers. And two teams, Tham, Selene, Tham, Selene. I'm almost thinking I might not play AEF. Uh, Crazed will have to play extremely well to convince me to play Cybern here. And what we're seeing is a Mantis Scout combo versus Thamseline. I really like the Thamseline combo. I think it's the most powerful in these early battles. It's because the Selene provides a little more firepower. Scout goes down. Some chest bumping, a slow turret there. There's a little bit of bad micro from Pecherico, but he's going to save it and that Selene made the difference. See how that turret for the Tham was being very annoying. And now this Selene will clean up and get the engineer. Big victory for Pecherico. On the bottom here, a fairly large force for Pecherico, who is actually see how well his power balance is. Oh, he's about to finish his second Hydro. And that's the power of uh, that major assault right there. That gives a good cover for his expansion. So I really think early raids here, just like Pecherico did, and the ACU running across. The ACU of Pecherico just running in the middle, it's interesting. And uh, overall, Pecherico just taking over this map. Looks like nothing from Christ coming in. It's just a team of Selene's. As there goes Christ, he walked through the canyon. And that's exactly where Pachirico is going to go. And what Pachirico, yeah. It's Manta, you can see how much quicker they're going to the, the Mantis. There's an assault coming in from Pachirico. I'm not really sure if Pachirico wants to do this. Yeah, it's 
a lot of build capacity right there. He will retreat. And uh, let's look at actually. Pachirico, why does he have so many prowl problems? Even though he's got two hydros. It's a very brave engineer. Gets missed by Medusa. And then gets ran over. Crazed finishes the PD. Commander under attack. And uh, yeah, Pachirico in full retreat does not want to get caught. A DPS on uh, Commander is 100. With four tanks. Uh, if you have four tanks together with an ACU, facing another ACU, you're going to have twice as much damage as the enemy. This is why the enemy, the proper way to fight that is to target the tanks. Take down the DPS. Of course, when you target the tanks, you stop. Uh, and that's time lost. That's where you want to target exactly in the direction that your ACU is pointing. Which is typically once you start retreating. Shooting backwards should be pretty straightforward what to shoot. Up on top, similar numbers. Crazy is going to try to get on the thin side of this force. Bachirico needs to regroup there. As uh, Christ, uh, does he have the necessary forces? Up on top, he definitely does. And a big reclamation opportunity. On the bottom, he's finishing a PD. I hate these PDs. The sub resilience do it first. Yes, Crazed decides to do it as well. On Raider, it's much more difficult to see where to shoot at exactly. Also, want to thank Lame for convincing me to first make PD and then um, the walls used to always do it the other way around and actually now after a couple games I saw it's it's a fairly major difference and it's, I guess it's a bug in the game as this game continues to roll past us I did see tech 2 and I see a tech 2 engineer in the middle T2PD for craze he's gonna try to take the metal I'm seeing Elshavas for Pachirico and Ilshivas are a big pain for anybody, including Cybern. Looks like Hoplites. Strange choice. This crazed ACU. Where the heck did he go? Just wandering the streets lonely with <laughs> nobody around him. He just got scouted. That could get himself in trouble there. Although I think Pachirica will just go ahead and grab his mass. Pachirica with the transport will grab the top ledges. This is all tech one. Elshavas versus tech one land spam. As we're seeing first signs of hoplites. And if you're crazy, let's see how crazy controls his hoplites. So far they're just in a big <laughs> team with a bunch of manti. Big mass stall, 5,000 reclaim. Petro Rico, how much? 4,000. So that's a big difference. Significant power advantage for crazed, which he's wasting. He has a lot, a lot less mass, I guess, than he anticipated. And uh, Elsheva versus Hoplite. Hoplite's on the front lines. Uh, that's not good. But these Manta, I guess they have numbers. And oh yeah, there are also rhinos mixed in here as well. Those hoplites were just sort of decoys to make Pechirico feel like he can uh, have this battle. And what we saw was a major victory for Christ. It was just massive numbers. But I think these rhinos that were mixed in were a critical component. Although there are still quite a few hoplites in Christ forces. Christ puts up a PDE, retreats. And now he's going to go to the middle with his ACU. And uh, once that falls, that opens up Crazed base to an assault from Pachirico. Um Probably don't want to lose all that without putting up a fight. ACU for Pachirico, almost done with Tech 2. The middle very much in <laughs> Crazed possession. But no reason to take the middle when you can go around. 
Not sure if I agree with all those investments from Christ. Christ poised to assault Pachirico. Pachirico put in a lot of defenses in that area. No defense whatsoever from Christ. He'll just give up all, at least four or five mass extractors, a hydro, and a factory. And uh, any response? Because these units will continue to roll through. This is a lot of firepower. PDs, maybe even Tech 1, Tech 2 might be a little too late for Tech 2. That's crazed. Yeah, you might be thinking about. Uh, oh, it's a cruise missile launcher from Pachirico. I am seeing Tech 2 Air. It's producing nothing. Gray is losing tech to mass extractors. He is reclaiming quite a bit of units. It's a nice hidden tank. And uh, Pachirico way ahead in terms of mass production. Pachirico with tech 2 in his ACU could get himself in trouble. You can see where Gray's is going. But it's a long march even for Cybern. Pachirico will... Yeah, he's going to put all of his forces. <laughs> yeah, Gray's gets to the choke point in time to cut off Pachirico. This could be a very interesting battle here for survival. A very powerful ACU from Pachirico, crazed, no upgrades. He's got a whole bunch of Take 1 forces, hoplites. And actually, I think Grazed uh, does not want this battle. This is a lot of Take 2 coming his way against a more powerful ACU with a cruise missile launcher standing by. That's very deadly against ACUs. This is where even a single tank could create a lot of problems. I think it is. It's grazed retreats <laughs> and a point defense here. Uh, it's horrible. I want to see that missile launcher hit the ACU. I'm sure Petrugo is thinking that. And grazed is I think done. He's gonna be shot by a PD. Oh man, that was a total mess. Pachirico dominating. You can see uh, Craze was thinking about a snipe, but he died way too quick. And it was this assault. This point defense just was not sufficient. And Craze assaulted here. There was a buildup of units. Craze decided to attack somewhere else. But I think this was the major mistake. Too much investment right there. Instead of there, if Craze uh, sent those units to support the ACU, perhaps at a T2 PD creep in that position. That would have been a lot more powerful. In this game, we're going to see whether or not Aeon is a good option on this map. Lucian going with Aeon, taking on Embers. Ember actually already seen the next two games in this best of three. But uh, I think they'll come in after this one. Uh, Embers and uh, Lucian. Lucian is from old school. One of two clans uh, vying for the top spot into Intergalactic Coliseum. Embers from uh, SFO. I uh, think they're going to be fourth because Vo Voice of Reason is going to be third. But uh, anytime either BC or Old School lose, it's a big deal because they haven't lost too many times. Let's see. There was a rumor that uh, Speed 2 is going to uh, use a, a Smurf to play me tomorrow, which would be awesome. I hope he plays. I don't know who I'm supposed to face, but if Speed wants to play, and I won't tell anybody. Uh, because I'd love to play that guy. But uh, so far... Second air from Embers, it's not a surprise. Second air from Lucian. Could be anticipating second air, but not sure if that's the best way to go. I think I know exactly what I'm gonna do here. Which uh, is not going to be second air. Lucy actually gone third air. And does Lucy in some of the other games that I've already watched between these players, I really love Lucian's build order. Definitely copying it for that map. Let's 
flare comes in, doesn't make it. So the thing about Auroras, I like the other tanks, takes such a long time to actually get them across. Lushan finally moves out, and Lushan is going to go to the top. This is a, the difference between the Pechorico crazed games. And actually, the two ACs are going to meet up on top. We've seen all the AC fighting on the bottom so far. And uh, here comes the bombers. Excellent bomb there. This is uh, not looking too good for Lucian suddenly. That bomber killed three critical engineers. Good defense from those entities as well. Four kills now. And uh, what do you do in a situation like this? All expansion completely shut down. Lucian 21 mass. This engineer here is very clear girl. If Embers would have killed that, oh, there goes the bomber. Uh, yeah, Embers a little slower here, but he's got units on the back door step here for Lucian's base. If they just push in, still air domination by Embers. He's got another bomber coming out and quick tech to land. From Amber, so it looks like he's known for that. Oh, where's the bomb? The bombs never came. Yep, and here comes the push. Is there a tech 2 for uh, Lucian? Nope. So even though. Yeah, and the Aurors, the slow Aurors are gonna attempt to play defense. They're like. It's like geriatrics. Our, our Aeon is a geriatric faction. Yeah. Attempt to dodge. Uh, this assisted suicide discussion. Embers. He's already got supporting factories coming up. It's a pillar. Pillar of spam. And yet another bomber. Three kills. So much harassment. And against Tech 2 land, uh, Lucian. I don't know what he can do. Yeah, another fairly one-sided game. No, I'm not getting A on. That's for sure. Lucian going to the middle. I guess that's where he wants to die. He'll meet his death in the middle. He'll need to do a couple overcharges if he has any hope of doing anything. He does have the power storage, but does not have the power production. <laughs> And, uh, yeah. He ran into the wrong neighborhood. A yeah, fairly quick game. <laughs> I feel like I need to look at open waters again, especially when I found this game. Ambers versus Lucci. Once again. Lushi, I really love this build order on uh, Four Leaf Clover. This game is actually before. Um, we're actually watching these games backwards. Maybe once, maybe I'll find this first game and I'll put everything in the correct order. Apologies if it confuses people, but uh, probably title this something like "Preparation for the Tourney." We're just analyzing build order, seeing what works, what doesn't. Uh, this map we already saw that Navy pretty much wins. Uh, and it's a question of Cybern or Aeon or Seraphim. And uh, I really like Cybern. That's the naval route. They are a little vulnerable. Uh, the tech to stage against air. But those frigates, I mean, they just dominate. 16 DPS against air, what does that mean? Let's actually look at that. How does that compare to some other anti-air units? So the actual stats for a frigate that isn't even this game, but it's so good I'm talking about it, um, is that the Cybern uh, frigate has the same DPS as their usual uh, mobile Tech 1 anti-air, which puts it about a fifth of a Tech 1 stationary. The destroyer for Cybern has an anti-air, which is 
about four times as much as uh, a frigate. So you can think about it, a cyber destroyer is pretty much a floating tech one anti-air stationary turret. Uh, if you're looking at Aeon, they have that uh, anti-air boat. One of those uh, is basically twice as good as uh, Siren Frigate. Well, Seraphim Frigate is very similar to the Cybern in the way it's played. It's a little uh, more health, very slightly. It has a faster fire rate, but it has lower DPS against both air and uh, other navy, but it's actually fairly close. It's not like the EEF or the Aeon frigates. The EEF is nice, it does that. Oh, this is a very nice micro day. Um, interceptor. So, what do we see? Lushon expanding to the side using floating arty to deny the middle and actually engineer in the middle from Lushon. And Lushon with his early inties. Oh, this interceptor needs a better driver. Wow. Holy shit, that was a beast. Yep, even though that interceptor is now off the map in the water, it killed an interceptor and a transport. That was huge. That could, I think that may be the game right there. Lucian attempting to drop on a very far uh, expansion. This is nice. <laughs> I guess the reason he's doing that, he's already got units on the bottom that he's expanded with, and he's got an ACU on the other side. Where is the ACU for Ambers? Ambers, what are you doing? Why is he still back home? That really confused me. Not using the ACU aggressively on this map is uh, very suicidal. Unless he's going to tech to tech to air or something and put it on transport. That would be kind of cool. Why is that dead? Oh, don't tell me. <sighs> Alright, this is a game of dead transports. I want to speed it up. Yeah, winning air and killing transports is one way to win this map. But uh, I really love this drop here. Other good bombers from Embers trying to deny. But this deficit and mass. Uh, I think Lucian pretty much has this. Although, oh, quick tech. That's why that uh, factory was destroyed. Embers rushed tech to naval. I see a tech to navy rush giving up all the eco on the map. How effective is that? That's what we're going to see. It's very painful to get that first destroyer out, but once you get it, it's definitely going to get a lot of kills. What's going to be the response from Lucian? He's sitting on a couple Tech 1 naval factories. Also, look at Embers. He's dominating air. Uh, air domination, Tech 2, Navy. And the ACU for Embers is walking toward Lucian's position, although Lucian is no longer there. And the thing is, Lucian has the entire bottom island, where he's also almost got a Tech 2 HQ. It's very interesting to see the position of that. Not the starting position, but as far away as possible from enemy destroyers. Are we going to see another destroyer here? Almost there. As the floating yard continues to harass. The air domination from Empress continues. Seeing a destroyer waiting up to rendezvous with the ACU. Thing that's going to happen though, Lucian is going to win air back as soon as all of that's dead and then he's going to drop all these units directly into Ember's base and Ember's is going to have nothing although Ember's now has two destroyers 14 kills on the first and now this destroyer may be forced to go underwater because of all those frigates yep where's the second destroyer needs to come in here and kill all this couple bombs be very nice and uh, I don't see them 
And actually, already a destroyer has been built. But second one comes in. Numbers needs to save this 16 kill destroyer. No reason to lose it. It will be preferentially targeted. I think that should have just walked away. And here comes a drop. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Lushan drops through a cloud of interceptors while Embers can get his transports past a single inti. Something to micro in this game. Yep. Embers. Ah. <sighs> Well, I guess maybe the previous game uh, is probably good, which I haven't seen, but you may have already seen it. I have no idea what I'm going to do. This is a total mess, but what I learned here is this is a good build order, but nothing that uh, is that important. It wasn't challenged. Really got to find a good replay on this map where there was actually a challenge. Third map I uh, gotta pay attention to is Four Leaf Clover, just in case the best of three goes to the third game. I do like this map. This is actually a game between SFO and Old School. Lushi from Old School. Probably the best player on Old School. The whole thing Craze is also there. Embers, isn't this isn't Embers Congreve? So uh, this could be the best player from uh, SFO, although I think SFO also has Voodoo and Gocher. Yeah. yeah, these are two very good clans. Lushi, that's interesting, that's second air with ACU. No Hydro. May have to rewatch this game if that actually works. Embers decides to walk back to the Hydra with his ACU. I always hate to do that. We are seeing an aggressive engineer actually from both players, a little more aggressive from Lushon. Lushon actually wants all the mass, it seems. He's got a striker in support. Yep, from both players. Also interesting to see, I guess, anticipating a tech 3 battle. Take that back. This is just a standard uh, second uh, land factory with five pigeons. Some tree reclaiming going on from embers. And a mech marine together with a striker are going to protect. Alright, this needs to be slower. Mech marine striker combo. The beautiful thing about this is if you if your mech marine gets hit you can dodge the shots. If the striker gets hit, the McMarine can get close and do a lot of damage. The DPS for McMarine is actually, I think, higher than a striker. It's just the health is a lot lower. So this combination is very nice. And you can see what Lucian does. He split up that force, make it look bigger. And uh, total reclaim domination in the middle. So what we saw from Embers was that he didn't use his ACU aggressively and uh, he did not uh, send enough to deny the middle reclaim which uh, yeah on this map is quite bad I think and he's also let this mech marine sneak in however early on a few more planes from embers because this was a third air from Lucian it's a very interesting build order from Lucian I think I'm gonna steal this I just uh, rewatch this at the end just to see exactly how to do this build order. As <laughs> no AC, this has been the longest without an ACU. This McMarine almost kills an engineer. I think the Snoop got the kill at the end. Yep, Snoops versus damage light assault butts. Never neglect that. They can kite, they got the range. And uh, yeah, this is superior tank from Lucian. A bomber coming in from Embers. Does he have any targets? An interceptor, multiple interceptors for Lucian are on the case. This bomber has no particular targets. I think it's just going to die. 
that was an opportunity for embers nope poor air micro there from embers i think that interceptor could have got a couple kills as those entities were following the bomber as embers may get the, it's almost five minutes and he's still not out of his base with his acu he's given the map away to lucian although a secret engineer or embers can it make enough difference look at the power difference quick tech to land however from embers so acu is going to go to the metal together with tech to land embers <laughs> does not have uh, too much eco whatsoever is that 1000 reclaimed He's reclaiming rocks in his base because he hasn't really been outside his base 1800 for lucian that's a fairly big difference although this ng a bit sneaky and uh yeah, allow Lucian to just grab these mass structures with an engineer. A bit of a lost opportunity. Lucian will. Yeah, he will deny any kind of expansion to the left. As we're seeing, the first pillar is in the middle. ACU <laughs> runs into his own tanks. So many mass structures just unclaimed. 11 versus 22. I want to speed this up. We'll just speed it up as this striker here with one kill sneaks into the back. Yeah, Lucian knows these tanks will uh, prevent any kind of expansion. So he moves his ACU in position to claim the other expansion. As Embers will attempt to just roll through the middle with his superior Tech 2 force. Now, multiple Tech 2 factories. How far will Embers go? And I actually think here Embers can at least get a draw or a victory. Although this PD is pretty critical. I don't think Embers realized where Lucian's ACU was. He's got no idea. <laughs> um, as Lucian continues to raid, <laughs> Lucian will actually leave once again. That's a lack of raider and scouting. As Lucian drops off an NG. He's going to build up his mass advantage. Embers 10 kills, saving his tech two forces. Yeah, and this is this took so long that actually Lucian gets tech two of his own, and Embers lo lost a bit too much health. A great overcharge from Lucian, and about as one sided as it gets. Eight minutes, and Embers is a, actually an extremely good player. I don't know what that means, but I wanna I wanna see the beginning again. Exactly the builder from Lucian seat from his point of view. Yeah, who's the best uh, player from the United States? It could be Embers on a good day Congress. Probably Crazed. Yeah. It's gotta be Crazed. The vortex as well. Alex getting better. All right, solution first two PGens, two mask extractors with the ACU. And yeah, it's a little small move order to grab that other mask extractor. Two engineers, striker McMarine. Guess the McMarine a little faster. It's the adjustment for speed, that uh, third engineer. Yeah, I think that engineer... Where is he going to go? Oh, this is the quick engineer to the middle. That's got all those plans. The other engineer is going to grab the other mask structures. Probably going to do some reclaiming. Or will rush the Hydra. Meanwhile, standard... Three pigeons, so total five pigeons, second land with air immediately after. This is fairly simple to remember. You do your regular second land build order, and if the hydro is close, and you get it with your first uh, early engineers, you can get uh, s uh, third air. Although I think uh, this much building with ACU early on requires quite a bit of reclaim 
it's only the third engineer that's gonna get the hydro and uh, almost a mess though extremely good builder and do people realize just how close that is finally a bit of mess stalling but it's not huge so where this engineer instead of rushing straight to those mass extractors will pick up a little reclaim will be critical because these engineers making the hydro as oh, first big reclaim is about to come in you always want to account for the fact you might not get that engineer that's why you gotta get reclaimed somewhere else somewhere much safer second land factory is being produced see minus 50 on the power and This is just unfair. <laughs> Easy victory. Lushi begins his air factory. The Hydra is finished. Nearly perfect timing. He did get scouted. This is where not going second air could be vulnerable if Embers had a bomber coming in right now. However, Another thing that could have happened if Embers was a little more aggressive with ACU, given that the ACU for Lucius sitting back for a total of three lad factor three factories total, still hasn't moved to the metal. An aggressive ACU could have denied that engineer. It's a uh, scout for Lucian anticipating that somebody snuck in. And I mean this is basically the builder. There are still two PJ, two engineers on the power spam and it, this engineer was critical I think without that engineer we're in a lot more difficult you can see only 300 left in storage when Lucian used up a total of 1600 so he's used 1300 mass for reclaim already before minute 4 it's about as, uh, as awesome as it gets for somebody Also two engineers on factory spam. This factory spam is fairly critical. Yeah, that bomber should be targeted. This is the opportunity for Embers to shoot some things down and finally a mass style. This is where these engineers need to go find uh, work somewhere else. And perhaps even these. It's way too much way too much power now for Lucian. Yep, I think uh, let's actually see this till the end at max speed. Since we already saw it once. And here Lucian was probably thinking, where where is Embers? I guess he scouted, he's seen those tech two factories. And that was the opportunity. If Embers knew just what he had, he could have come in. Even with that PD, I think it could have been at least a draw. But Embers went in blind, allowed Lucian to attack at a perfect time. Yep, 